trading with or against the trend? A very intriguing question. And I'm going to answer this question in, in a surprisingly detailed way once you finish watching this uh, presentation, you'll see why. Okay, here's a disclaimer. This is simply a legal thing. I'm not giving trading advice, etc. All trading is inherently risky. There could be losses. Let me ask this question, which is the second question. Why did the stock market rally to new highs after the Brexit event that caused a big drop? I'm going to come back and answer this question after my, my presentation. Okay, so this will be the second question that we'll be asking. The first one is, are you trading with the trend or against the trend? All right? Okay. Today we're going to talk about how to trade without any indicators. I'm not going to beat up on indicators. I'm just going to tell you that I do not trade them. I'm going to teach you how to read price charts the easy way. And again, read price charts is the key here again no moving averages I'm not going to talk about oscillator divergence no bands or channels not going to talk about Fibonacci, uh, fundamental news fundamental news or reports as to why the brexit thing caused the trade balance to go up none of that okay it's just pure technical chart patterns and the reason why is that you can never confirm an entry or an exit using lagging indicators okay so I don't use lagging indicators you're gonna learn how to trade objectively using trend strength structures only and these structures provide clues to arrive at a high probability winning trade entry isn't that nice this approach is self-adjusting it adjusts to work in fast trending markets as well as choppy markets they say the market is choppy about two-thirds of the time well we're gonna find exact entries and exits using trend strength which I'm gonna talk about <clears throat> okay now imagine this scenario <clears throat> I came up with this scenario I want you to think about suppose you're in a helicopter flying over the plains of Africa and you see a herd of antelope running north okay and a day later you see the same air you're looking at the same area of the Serengeti and the animals are running south and you notice that the animals take longer running south compared to when they were running north you go to another several miles away and then you you watch as another herd of animals uh, take longer running north compared to when they are running south. Now what's going on here? Keep this thought in mind because we're going to use this type of simple logic in our trading. Okay? Okay, what is the building block of all chart patterns? I am a <clears throat> die-hard chart pattern person. Okay? What's the building block? Well, again, it's the measure move. If you guys have seen this before, it is the simple zigzag pattern. This is the measure move, and the me all measure moves are actually the clues to solve the puzzle to the market. Okay, the measure move is the simple pattern that will yield mass massive profits if you know how to use them. Okay, now what is the measure move? Now, I'm going to give you a, uh, a preliminary explanation of a, what a measure move is. It's simply a zigzag pattern. Now, the rule of thumb says that A, B should equal to C, D. In the real world, that is not always the case. All right? So what we have here is simply a thrust, which is a move up, and you have a retracement, and then an up move. That's all this measure move is all right again this is set very very simple and the measure move shows us trend strength it shows us whether the market is bullish or bear, bearish okay and what is the bias to that direction 
This will tell you when a trend is likely to continue or reverse. Okay, let's go back to this measure move again. In this measure move, again, we're going to focus in on point C. Point C is very, very important because that is the retracement down from B. Again, it retraces down against the A, B up move. Okay, and then the up move continues from C to work its way up to D. Again, we assume that in a preliminary sense, CD will equal to AB. Okay, so why is point C so important? Because point C tells us where point D would be. Because if point C is a shallow retracement against the AB move, where should point D be? Up there, right? Okay, another way to look at it is like this. Here's a deep retracing BC leg against the AB move. But if the, C, if the BC pullback is uh, shallow like this, point D ought to be up there. Again, that's your general rule of thumb. I'm not saying that that's always the case. Okay. Same thing going down. Point C is the pullback against the AB drop. That's very, very important because that's a retracement up against the AB down move. And if point A is up there, point D should be down there. Okay, so point C is the retracement. How deep and how shallow is point C is very, very important. <laughs> okay, here's a deep retracing point C. Here's a shallow retracing point C, bringing point D down there. All right, very simple. So the deeper the retracement at point C, the weaker the trend strength. The shallower the retracement, the stronger the trend strength. Now, what is considered shallow? Less than 50%. What's considered deep? I like to have it about two-thirds or more. Okay? <clears throat> People always ask me, what's between 50% and two-thirds? That's sort of like no man's land. It's shallowish and medium deep-ish. Okay? It's not really something that would stand out. <clears throat> Less than 50%, shallow. More than two-thirds, deep. Okay, so what we're going to see today is that we're going to get a lot of mileage out of this simple pattern, okay? It tells us which direction we should be looking to trade, okay? Should we be leaning long or short? And here's, what, here's how you can do it. We are going to look at the measure move in terms of retracement and, ex and extensions. I'm going to talk about extensions right now. Okay. Now, extensions is very, very simple. We have measure moves connecting together in one of two ways. Okay. One of two ways that a series of measure moves can connect together. The first way, the first configuration, is when you have a measure move. In this case, it's a not move, right? For those of you who who've seen waves and all that, you know you're not going to get just one measure move. This set last leg of the measure move starts off a new leg, right? Here we have two measure moves strung together, attached together, <coughs> okay? And, we want, of course, we want to see how deep are these pullbacks, of course, okay? But this is how we have an up move. Now, if this looks familiar to the Elliott wave people, then yeah, it's a five wave pattern. The way I see it, there are two measure moves strung together. Okay, here's a down move, zigzag down, measure move to the downside. This last leg starts off a new one. And this is how it looks like in a chart example. Here's the first measure move, here's the second one. Okay, now each of these measure moves, the red one and the blue one, has its own. Uh, retracement at their respective point C. All right, and we'll talk about that in a second. But here's a retracement at the red point C. Here's a retracement on the blue point C. Now, if point if the blue pattern is a little bit shallower than the red, then the energy is sort of accelerating in that side. I'll use the word accelerating in kind of a lightweight manner. But okay, so these are the things that we want to be aware of. Okay, let's move on. 
So <clears throat> this is how you have measure moves in a series, right? Zigzag up, zigzag down. And here is an example of what that looks like. This is a silver daily chart, zigzag, zigzag down, right? Zigzag, zigzag up. Okay, that's what it looks like. Quite simple. All right. Now, here's a second configuration that makes it even more important. <laughs> okay. This is the mesh move to the upside, but look, this CD leg is broken down into a measure move that looks like this. This is a measure move that is different in terms of the blue and the red relationship than what I showed you earlier. Okay, this ABCD, shown in blue, is actually this, the red CD leg. The red CD leg gets broken down into this blue pattern. Now, here's the thing to tell that is different than what I shown you earlier, okay? Blue point B is lower than blue, red point B. What that means is the blue pattern was unable to move above point B before making a zigzag to the upside. It was unable to do that. Now, what does that mean? That means it's not that bullish. It's not that, it's going up, but it's not that strong to the upside, right? I call this measure move within the measure move, okay? Now, let's talk about extensions. I would consider this whole thing from here to here an extension. It starts here, and now we find ourselves right here. Okay, This is an extension. Of course, there are two different variations of how, these, how this up move extended up, okay? but that is an extension. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. This is the 30-minute uh, chart of the crude oil. I'm going to point out, can you see where this example shows up? Well, here it is. The CD leg here, from here to here, is broken down into this pattern here. This was unable to go higher. It stopped here, and then, then it went up. And that last leg up, is the red CD lake. Again, you see AB equals CD somewhere around here, right? On both counts. So this is what it looks like. And of course, there's a big down. Now we're gonna talk about here why it dropped so much in a second here, okay? So this is the configuration. A measure move within a measure move indicates weaker trend strength compared to measure moves in a series, right? Because again, that blue point B unable to go beyond the red point B. Now, if the inner measure move has a D point C, that's probably a reversal in the making. Here's what I mean. If I see this coming up like this and it's deep, and this thing moves up, but it moves up without breaking up above this high, it basically sort of chickened out, if you will, and it comes as a deep retracement here, this move is probably a weak move, okay, from here to here. This is a weak extension if it starts off here and ends here. Okay. So that would be a weak situation, a weak trend. Again, measure move within the measure move and if you have that inner measure move with a, with a deep retracement. Okay. So going back to this chart, we do see that this red pattern has a deep retracement here and this measure move within the measure move, again, watch carefully, Unable to go above, this thing pulls back here, nice and deep, about two thirds. Once it cleared this high and that high, is unstable, and which led to a, a downward move. This is called a weakening uh, trend extension, I should say, that went from here up to there. Okay, so that's a weak way of extending up, trend strength wise. Going down, this is exactly the same thing, but upside down. The red CD leg gets broken down into this blue ABCD. This is a measure move within the measure move. Why? Because blue point B unable to break below this pivot low. This is a weak downtrend. Weak downtrend means what? About to go up, maybe, right? It's not that strong. It's not wanting to go down very much. 
that's compared to measure moves in a series. All right, so this is what, uh, what I want you to pay attention to. So a quick summary of measure moves working together. This is measure moves in a series, okay? This thing went from here down to here, and the route took this type of uh, patterns to, to play out, okay? Now, the second way is this. This is a measure move within a measure move. Now, if it were to work its way from here down to here, using, I mean, uh, having this pattern in between, this is a weaker downtrend compared to measure moves in a series. Okay? And the, the other direction is the same way. Here's measure moves in a series going up. Measure move within the measure move going up. Okay? So, again, you know which of these patterns would show up as a weaker pattern, right? Okay, we talked about extensions. Let's talk about retracement, <coughs> okay? Retracement is important because what you want to do <coughs> is when the trend is strong, you want to trade with the trend and you want to enter on pullback, which is the retracement, okay? <coughs> Does that make sense? Now, if the trend is very, very strong, you can get in on a breakout and catch it when it breaks out because it's just not going to pull back at all. But we're going to talk about in, let's just call it normal market conditions. When it's, the trend is there, but it's not super strong, okay, it's not completely sideways and dead, but it's chugging along, and this is a normal market condition. So when you do breakouts, it may not follow through immediately. So this is when the trend is strong, and you want to get in on the direction of the trend and trade with the trend. Now, what does that look like? What does that mean? I'm sure you'll be wa you're wondering, okay? So let's talk about this move up. Is this a strong move up or a weak move up? Well, again, we talk about point C as the all-important uh, thing to pay attention to, okay? I'll put a D here and then question mark. <coughs> Is this a strong trend up or a weak trend up? This is a strong trend up because point C is shallow. So what do you do? You buy on pullback. Pullback to where? Here's the secret. Here's what I've been doing for the last several months, and this whole week I've been profitable using this, and I'll show you. Once it gets below here, it is, you're in the buy zone. Now, it's really between here and here, somewhere in the middle. This is the buy zone in a strongly trending market, point C being shallow. Now, point C is very shallow. It might be just a few ticks below point C. Okay, so the nature of how shallow point C is, is important. So that's the way you want this to retrace down to, to buy it, okay? And, and it goes to new highs. This is the answer. This is the buy zone. Now, what if you have two measure moves, okay? You have two measure moves, and it looks like this. Well, this is a shallow retracement. How about this guy right here? This is deeper. This is deeper. So between here and here, there's no buy zone because this measure move, I'm going to redraw it to make it look brown, is too deep right there. The buy zone is still going to be below this shallow point C. Again, it could be a little bit shallower. It could be, here's A, it could be halfway if, if somebody puts a gun to my head and say, where should the buy zone be? I'll just say the middle between C and A, okay? But it can be a little higher. It can be a little lower. This is the zone. And when it gets down to the zone, it's going to make it to new highs above this high. That's the buy zone in a strongly trending market when there's two, when there's two measure moves like this, okay? All right, how about this? What do we have here? We start out with a deep retracement, and then we have a shallow one, right? It's the shallow one that we're going to pick on again. Here's point C that's shallow. Again, less than 50% is shallow. A lot less than 50% is very good. Okay, now here is where we're going to be buying it between here and here. Okay? So if this thing turns around, and a lot of times it will, and you'll be buying it, where would it be going? Remember I said 
A, B should equal C, D, right? Yeah, it should be going up there. So the buy is somewhere around here. I'm not going to talk about the entry in a minute uh, at, at this presentation, but I just want to show you where the buy zone and the sell zone would be, okay? You're going to pick on the shallow retracement in the measure move. If it's shallow like this, you're going to pick on this. Once it gets below here, don't say, oh, no, I'm going to go bearish. No, no, no. This is still very, very good. It's between here and here, somewhere in the middle. Maybe it's a little higher, okay? This will be the buy zone, okay? <clears throat> now, what type of, how, how do you know you're going to be buying it safely? Here's what you do. Look for a weakening pattern extending into the buy or sell zone. Let's talk about the buy zone here. Look for a weakening pattern extending into the buy zone. What is the weakening pattern? Remember? Yeah, it's that guy. It's this guy. This is a weakening pattern because we talk about how this thing came down here. Let's say we start with a deep retracement. And here's a deep retracement, a measure move within the measure move. This is a weakening pattern. What, what, what if we have one of those coming into our buy zone? Okay, well, let me draw it in. It looks something like this. It would be a different variation of this. And I'll show you the actual trade that I took today in the crude oil. This is a very good pattern because from here to here is a weakening pattern. This is, let's call it, it has no business dropping below here. Remember, this is supposed to be a, a pivot low. Everybody says this is a support point. Well, it broke the support point. But it doesn't matter. Again, you're into the buy zone below here. Again, here is point C that's shallow. And you should not go below point A. It should make it a new highs. This is the, 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 uh, the buy. As, so we are looking at this thing retracing down. But as it retraces down, it did not just go boom like this. How it retraces is extremely important. We have a zone ready for it to bounce off of once it gets below point C. And the way this thing makes its way down is telling you that, hey, it has no business being down here below C. It's a buy zone. All right? So let's go back to some of these other patterns. Here, what do we have? Something like this. Ideally, okay. Now, there, you don't always get what you want. You don't always get this uh, type of measure move within the measure move situation into the buy zone, but this is what you want to do ideally to uh, look for an entry, to take it to new highs here. Again, I'll show you some chart examples in a second. Over here, what do you do? You want to see it coming down below here, somewhere below here, but you don't want to see it like this. You want to see you want to see at least a lot of deeps, okay? I'm not sure if you guys remember me saying deeps off the lows, shallows off the lows, deeps off the highs. This is what I'm talking about, okay? So can we see something like that here? This is the three-minute chart of the crude oil. I'm showing you this because I took this trade myself. Can you see that series of zigzags? Actually, I forgot to show you this one because I was not even paying attention to this. This is very deep. This is shallow. This is what? The kind of deep. It is this guy that I want to pick on. Pick on meaning buy below, okay? And there you go. There's that deep measure move within the measure move shown in blue. And boom, it pops straight up. There are several ways to enter the market, okay? I'm not going to get into that yet. But this is how we're going to look for, first, a zone, a zone that makes sense. Here we made a move up. And when it moves up, there are several zones. This is the first measure move, second, third. Is this a good zone to buy? No, I don't like it. How about below here and below here? No, that's too tight. It is this guy here that is very, very good. Again, the shallower, the more it can dip just within that zone. If it's deep, or let's say not that shallow, it can dip a little deeper. And I'll, again, I'll show you some more charts on how this is done, okay? This is my secret to trading. Today trading and longer term trading, you guys can do the same thing. All right, We're going down, same story. Where is the sell zone? Above this high, but not above this high. 
okay? That is the zone to go short because we have a strong downtrend. Point C is shallow, okay? Now, I'm not going to do a breakout short and drop it below because a lot of times the trend is not that strong to where there's follow through. You want to buy, in this case, short on, on a bounce into the zone to take it down to new lows. That's the, the thing. Okay, so here we have a downtrend and what is this? Remember what this is? Is a weak uptrend. This is an extension that extends from here to here. If this is how it extends into the sell zone, then, hey, that sounds very good, doesn't it? Okay, so what does this look like? Here's what it should look like. Again, you don't always get what you want, but if I get this, I'm all over it. Okay, this is a very weak extension. This is a very strong extension. You get it? Strong extension, weak pullback, weak because of these guys here. So this is how you can find a very, very good way to get in. How about this? Well, the second one is too deep. Okay, so not between here and here. That's cutting it too thin. It's between here and here. Where? Generally speaking, somewhere in the middle, rule of thumb, it could be a little higher, it could be a little lower, but above point C, that point C, not this deep one. This one's that one's too deep. Got it? Okay. How about this one? Yeah. Look for the shallow guy here. The shallow guy here is here. Above here is where you want it to come into to short and take it down to new lows. All right. <clears throat> now, we have a potentially high quality trade setting up even before you see that measure move and the measure move if you can see this. Again, we have a high potential, we have a potentially high quality trade setting up when there's an overbought pattern extending to the sell zone or an oversold pattern extending into the buy zone. Okay, what does an overbought, oversold pattern look like? Okay. Well, remember the A, B equals C, D situation? <clears throat> I tell you, this is more of a myth than something that is, I, I would not trade this as a standalone A, B must equal to the C, D situation. Okay. But what if you have this pattern like this and point C is deep? Now, that's a first good sign of how you want this to pull back into the zone, right? But what if you have the CD leg bigger than AB? Now, that I've exaggerated here. It's a lot bigger, okay? But if the CD leg is bigger than AB and point C is deep, we have what I call an overbought situation. Overbought meaning it has run, has outdone itself, if you will, okay? And from here, there's expected to be a nice drop because point C is deep. And the CD leg has kind of overdid itself, right? Going south, you have, again, point C being deep. CD bigger than AB, oversold. Oversold giving you a potential bounce, right? Make sense? Okay. Here's a chart of the S&P, the two-hour chart just earlier this week. What do we see in terms of this? At first blush, you say, I don't know what's going on. This is just sideways. Yeah. For the, for the untrained eyes, it's sideways, okay? But did you see that? That's a shallow retracement to the upside. A shallow retracement because point C is shallow, okay? Wait a minute. Did I, didn't I say C, D should equal to A, B? Shouldn't point D be up there? Yeah. That's the target that you're going to uh, ride it to, right? But look, can you see that? That's a deep retracement off the high. Now, in this situation, point C is very, very shallow in red. And point C is very deep. Let me draw it up the whole thing here. Okay, A, B equals C, D. Well, yeah, I want C, D to be a little bit bigger than A, B. 
and again, notice how I said inside of this buy zone below shallow point C, somewhere in the middle, as actually shaded a little higher, here is going to make it to the promised land. Okay, you want some more charts? Okay, what do we have here? Shallow. Deep and pulling back CD bigger than AB below here. See, notice how it's trying to get to the middle. Okay, didn't quite make it. Now, in this case, the target is to, this, to new highs. But, of course, monitoring the trade as it moves is going to be very, very important. Oh, this is the trade I took today. Can you see? Can you guys see anything? It's going to take a little while, but... Can you see this retracement coming off the high as shallow? Now, how shallow is that? It's, I see it's shallow. It's not that shallow, okay? So where is the zone to short? Between here and here. How does it get up there? This is, this is crude oil today, earlier, after the news. This is a deep retracement. The CD leg, choppy, chop, chop, bigger than AB into the zone. You can short here, stop above there, targets below there, and go, and go a lot lower than that low. Because you have this whole thing facing the right direction. The downward move here telling you that it's a strong downtrend in the making. Thank you, shallow point C there. This move here is a weak up move retracing against a strong down move. Make sense? Okay, let's take a look at some recent, some more recent trades, okay? For this, I'm going to go to my charts, and here's bonds, really quickly. From this high over here, we got deep, 60-minute chart bonds. We got shallow, 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 shallow here. Between here and here. Now, in this case, it didn't start out very deep, shallow, okay? But over here, it got a little choppy, choppy, chop. By the time it curls back down, hey, you're curling down in this zone, new lows. All right? Here's a, this is the daily chart of soybeans. Shallow, deep. Deep, CD leg, this one is actually equal, CD equals AB. Above here, boom, you're coming down. Now, to get a close-up look, instead of going to the 60-minute chart, I could go down to a one-hour, a two-hour chart. Here's a two-hour chart, 120-minute chart, and get a close-up look. And I do see a shallow retracement off of this high over here, right there. We've got a little deeper here, okay? So... I don't want to go in this, this that's too tight, okay? But between here and here is fair game. All right? From here to here, notice how this thing looks like it's jamming up, but it stopped, curled down, curled down, boom, new lows. Because it got into this, let's call it nosebleed area, the sell zone. Has no business being up there, but it's there. And it got up there with a deep retracement, thank you very much. So this is sort of like, the general way of trading. Get the zone, get the retracement into the zone. The zone is simply the shallow retracement. That's all it is. Okay? That's all it is. If you have a series of deep, shallow, deep, shallow, look for the uh, the shallow one to pick on. Let's see, some more charts, some more charts. Okay, how about uh, gold? Here's gold. Here's a 30-minute chart of gold. <laughs> okay. So let me zoom. Let me kind of squish everything together. Notice how gold's been coming down. It's coming down because of what? Lower highs, lower lows. This is down. Quite simple, right? <clears throat> now, in this downward move, starting out from here, the first time it makes a zigzag to the downside like that, you know that's going down. But is it going down strong? Or is it going down wimpy? If it's going down 
wimpy, you'll see some zones in which to short. Okay, let me point out one right now. From here, we've got this, we've got this. We have, we have this guy right here. That's shallow. In fact, all of these guys are shallow. As this thing makes its way above here, it will be a shortable zone between here and here, right? But look, this is an example of how it is not, I repeat, not coming off of the low with a deep. It came over there with a shallow. Yeah, it's in the cell zone. But if it comes in shallow, guess what? It got deeper, deeper. This is good. This is called slowing down after the initial strong move. So it will be coming into the deeper part, the middle part, actually, of the cell zone. Because once you get above here, being shallow, you're looking at it on borrowed time. Okay. And here we have a move that brought it down to new lows. So again, look for that shallow retracement if you're going down. And here we're still going down, and I see a retracement right here. Everybody see that? Right there. Is that shallow? It's not really shallow, but sort of shallow. This one got a little deeper over here, okay? So between here and here, I'm going to short. However, because it's not very shallow, I really do need to see a lot of deeps going in there, and I do have that deep. In fact, this one got here first time, but it did not break the new lows. Deep, deep, a lot of deeps coming in. It went to the higher end of this zone, and that's where it was unable to go above this high for the short. In fact, this move here is nice and choppy, and you like that. You want that to be, to be fighting its way up against a shallow. Again, how shallow is shallow? I want it to be 50% or less. This one looks like it's 50% maybe not a whole lot less than 50%, okay? So so here we have a very strong situation because the choppiness going up compared to the other uh, rally, the other pullback, I should say. This pullback here started out shallow. It got a little deeper and deeper. Now you can think short. So because initially, if it's shallow, it's very strong, right, to the upside. But it wouldn't get deeper and deeper. It's getting ready to curl back down. Same thing here. There's a lot of choppy, choppy, choppy as it retraces from here to here. Again, where's here? There's that strong downtrend. It's between here and here. Okay? So this is a short to take it down to new lows. And there was all types of stuff like that in the uh, S&P. Okay? S&P here is, I mean, I, just, I showed you an earlier example here where we have a, a very shallow retracement here. Okay. Below here, if it gets choppy, chop, chop, it will be a fair game for a long. Okay. So you want to see it chopping its way down below that low. Don't say that, oh, it went below that low, I got to think short. No. See, it went below that low, it went below that low again, but eventually it works to new highs. So below this low, again, somewhere between here and here, somewhere in the middle. It doesn't quite make it to the middle, but it can try once or twice, and then it'll make it to new highs. Again, catching it coming, you can catch it going. Uh, it's the same type of uh, thing. Here's, let me show you the trade that I took on the crude oil. Not that one. We did talk about that one, okay? But it even works on the one-minute chart. I talked about this short over here in the crude oil. Let's talk about the long that I did. Now, why am I on a one-minute chart? Because I'm fast, and I'm able to watch these patterns very quickly. Okay, from here, this is shallow. Yeah, I'll call that sh shallow. This is deep. Okay, I'm f it's fair game below here to go long, okay? This is a, a deep retracement, isn't it? But wait, there's also, remember what we talked about earlier? The measure move within the measure move, right there. There's another one in there. This is not wanting to come down. Okay. This is the first buy area. There's also a second buy area. The same type of theme. Yep. It gives you a second chance of entering. There's a shallow retracement. Okay. To the upside. And here's a deep retracement. CD bigger than AB down here. Actually, I got in over here. 
I took a little bit of heat over there. My stop is below there. Target is, yep, way up there. Remember I keep on saying deeps off the highs, shallows off the lows? Yeah, that's what it is. Here, here's a low, shallow off the low, okay? Blue, here's a high. Deep retracement down, retracing into the buy zone. Buying it here, here, or here. And it snaps to new highs. All right, so that's what we're talking about. Okay, so going back to the original question that I had, do we trade with the trend? Do we trade against the trend? The answer is yes, <laughs> that's right. We find a good trend to trade with, and we want a weak pullback into that zone. That's the answer, okay? How about the other question that we have earlier? Why did the stock market rally to new highs after that Brexit stop. Well, let's take a look at the S&P chart on the daily. Okay, here's the daily chart of the S&P. Okay, remember this pattern here. I'm, I'm a pattern trader, right? Off of this low, how do we get off of this low? Shallow, shallow, mostly shallows, mostly shallows, okay? Now, look at this low over here. If I'm going to draw this with a thick brush, which I am right now, shallow, medium, okay? This was a Brexit drop. It dropped into where? Into the buy zone below here. Now, once it drops into the buy zone, this was a little tricky because it, it came so quickly, it did not have a one of those situations, okay? But what happens afterwards? Shallow off the lows. It kicked it to new highs. It took out this Brexit high that the high that before the Brexit drop and kicked it to new high. In fact, a shallow off the low is a very strong uptrend. Again, we remember we have shallow off the lows on these lows, right? And on the drop over here, we have what? We have deep, deep off of these highs. Well, this whole thing from last November up here is all telling me to think long. The Brexit drop was just a pullback below here to go long. In fact, this kind of higher low, higher high off of a shallow can be seen on a smaller chart even before this happened. We're going to look at the round here earlier when it took off from that, right after the drop. Let's go to the 60-minute chart. Okay, so from back down here, you can see that it started out shallow, shallow, and here's a shallow. So mostly shallows, but it's the shallow started up over here already. That's why it was just a pullback and not really a thing to go short on, all right? So this is what I want to say. You can learn all of the rules using measure moves to determine the entry, the stop. The initial target which is, again, new highs on new lows, and then trade management to exit, meaning if you still hold on to your, if you're holding on to your trade to the exit and you're riding out a shallow in a shallow, that means there's a lot more energy. Hold on to your trade. It could be a lot bigger, okay? It can be a lot, the, the profit can be a lot bigger, right? So what I'm offering is a one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I don't do this a lot. This is, uh, again, kind of, rare because I'm just happily trading on my, by myself We're using what I'm just showing you right now, okay? Now for this free mentorship, we're throwing in some free bonuses, okay? The first free bonus is the 10-week butterfly course that I've recorded last year. This is a standalone course. This can be used to uh, augment your knowledge of what I just talked about, okay? And the 10-week butterfly course has uh, these 10 chapters in it. Okay, now how to stalk a butterfly, how to confirm an entry and all that. This is a 10-week course, and this has a $997 value that's thrown in free when you sign up for one-on-one -on -one mentorship. The second free bonus is a superstructure trading ebook that I've wrote, okay, and has a video companion as well. So this is something that can really help, the, uh, help you learn the concepts all the things, including time ranges, which I don't ha didn't have a chance to talk about. And so this is available 
for you, to, to help you understand in depth of all these measure move patterns, okay? If you want more information, give Frank a call. We have different types of programs for your different budget, okay? 1-800-339-8588. Uh, or, or you can email me and call me if you have any questions at ken at superstructuretrading.com, okay? So, without further ado, I'm going to answer some questions if you have any. By the way, when do you not trade? I, I was mentioning that earlier. How, how, you know when to trade because the market is leaning in one direction. When would you not trade? When you have shallows of the highs and shallows of the lows, right? Don't trade yet. Or deeps of the highs and deeps of the lows because you're not having it lean in one direction. Going back to the animals, somebody was, I'm looking over here, yes, it's on a downward slope. If somebody's running north and it takes twice as long as it, for him to run north as it's running south, you know there's a slope going on. You know the path of least resistance is going south because he moves faster going south than going north. There's a slope. Same thing with what we're doing in trading here. Okay, You want to know that even though we're moving down, we want to know that if the move down is slowing down, using a lot of deeps, again, something that's shallow. Today I point out the exact zone in which to trade the reversal, the buy zone or the sell zone. Okay, I'm going to take some questions. And let me open this thing up. 